Good things tend to come in twos at McSorley's. First and foremost, the ale, dark or light, two at a time. No cocktails, no wine, nothing fancy, just good, honest brews for more than 160 years. New York's oldest bar is also home to a deeply personal story about two men, father and son, Bart and Wraith Bartholomew. My first night in New York in 1967, uh, I, got, I got loaded at that table over there. Well, little did Bart Bartholomew know he'd stumbled into his new home. He's now man McSorley's taps for 45 years, pouring pints of some of New York's rowdiest patrons. The New York Rangers, uh, it was 94, they won. Uh, they had a big parade in the city. After the parade, we were packed, uh, standing room only, and a limo pulled up, and uh, Fran Healy, the backup goalie, and uh, the Russian fellow, Nim Chimnov, uh, came in carrying the cup. So the tradition is to serve from the cup. So I was pouring ale into the cup, and then sort of like a mass communion, if you will, <laughs> serving beer and the cup slipped from my hands and banged on the stainless steel tray here and a big boom went out and everybody, everybody got quiet. There was like 200 people and everybody thought, what the? And then a chant went up, he dropped the cup, he dropped the cup. It's worth noting that's a rarity here at McSorley's, even though the barmen are regularly carrying 10 beers at a time. Bart had left his boyhood home in Ohio, attracted by New York's bright lights. He'd grown up with an abusive father and was determined to get things right with his own son, Rafe. The duo would wake up at the crack of dawn on a Saturday and Rafe would get to tag along for his old man's shift at the pub. We put him to work uh, probably illegally at five or six uh, to pick up a couple of this, run and go get a coffee when he was a little older for us. I can remember him sitting at six, five, six years old looking at three or four of us guys who were working and opening up and I wanted him to just feel what it was like and it's always different obviously from a child's eyes, a man's world. Probably the first really powerful memory I have, the one that, you know, the emotional one, is uh, playing with the cat. It was, he was a kitten when I first started coming in and I would ball up some aluminum foil, roll it through the sawdust, have it chase it around. Uh, it'd actually sit right over there and, and curl up behind the stove. I spent more time here than anywhere else, uh, and, and especially for New York, it's rare to, to have a place where pretty much anyone can walk into and find people that have known you pretty much your entire life. It's, uh, you know, it feels great to come in and, and, and see people if I've been gone for a while and catch up, and, and also just to sort of smell the, you know, smell the ale, smell the, the sort of age of the place. It's sort of like a, uh, a, a nice, fermented odor um, that, that doesn't just refer to the ale, but to the, the place, which has sort of been around long enough to ferment a little bit. McSorley's became Rafe's very own library, strewn across the walls tales of decades and even centuries gone by. During those 160 years of fermentation, there are firm reminders of presidential visits, sporting triumphs, and conflicts fought. This is also a bar that's experienced two world wars. Uh, Rich, tell me a little bit about the, the war history and how that's represented here in McSorley's. Well, I mean, you know, to talk about the, the probably the most famous and for us what feels like maybe the most sacred uh, artifacts in the bar are the wishbones hanging on the gas lamp above the bar, which uh, the story is that they were hung up by a group of local soldiers who were uh, getting ready to ship out for World War I. It was right after Thanksgiving in 1917, so coming up on 100 years. They came here to McSorley's to have a going away party. They each brought in the wishbone from their Thanksgiving turkey, and they hung them up for good luck. Uh, and then, you know, drank, told stories, went home. Uh, a little while later, shipped off to the war and all the guys who survived and made it, they, uh, they came back, came back to the city, came back to McSorley's and took down a, a wishbone. And then all the ones that uh, remained belonged to the guys who didn't make it. And so ever since then, they stayed up on that, on that gas lamp, um, you know, as a, to honor that sacrifice. It's a bar that stood the test of time, a place of permanence one where soldiers can leave their mark, safe in the knowledge that their legacies will be remembered. From writers to artists, regulars and tourists, 
the old timers and then the barely legal college drinkers, it served as a safe haven down the years. Abraham Lincoln once campaigned at the landmark watering hole and then there's a the story of a pretty well-known illusionist. There's also uh, a famous magician who supposedly has been here. There's a little bit of uh, debate as to whether it happened or not. Uh, the handcuffs there sort of tell the story. So Harry Houdini, uh, the you know famous escape artist, um, was uh, you know he's a downtown native. You know he grew up in the Lower East Side. You know not far from McSorley's. Uh, and the story is the pair of handcuffs hanging above the bar there belonged to a, a local policeman. And when Houdini came in, you know the guy kind of you know puffed his chest out a little bit and was said you know you're an escape artist let's see you get out of let's see you get out of a pair of real cuffs and so you know for Dini's like sure sure thing you know puts the cuffs on uh, goes behind the bar and somehow you know gets yeah whips them right off and uh, sort of in, in commemoration of that moment uh, you know we left the, the, the cop donated the, the cuffs to the bar Hungarian by birth, Houdini in many ways represents the melting pot that McSorley's and the East Village that the bar lies in the heart of has become. That eclectic vibe reflected on what's a rather interesting continental menu. This is the traditional cheese yeah. plates. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, yeah. but tell us, talk us through this particular dish. This was like sort of like the working man's lunch. And it goes back to John McSorley's original. Yeah. I mean, one of the things first thing it was be good or be gone, and uh, you know the slogan uh, on the uh, was, yeah. uh, good ale, raw, raw onions, onions, and, and no, no ladies. ladies. So I mean, this is <laughs> this this dish basically goes back to you know 163 years of the yeah. founding of the bar, and uh, you know it's it's still probably we go through more it's of good. these in a night than than any other food item. Serve it. We, we mix the mustard every day uh, uh, with with a little bit of the ale from the taps yeah. and. Hot water and the and the mix in the back. So and the, the idea is you essentially crack a piece of cheese, as raw, much onion as you like, and onion. a dollop of mustard. The mustard here is spicy, so uh, people get themselves into a little bit of trouble with it sometimes. I've heard uh, it has, well, I've had it before, and it has quite could, a yeah. distinct feeling on the the, the yeah. nose. Yeah, you, it can you it can blow the sign. <laughs> it's good for the winter time when you need when you got a little bit of a yeah. runny nose or or you're stuffed up. It can uh, clear you out very quickly. You either like it from the beginning or you learn to like it like it or learn to like it. That's the sort of stubborn attitude that's proven so successful around here down the years. A bar that's refused to surrender to the cries for posh cocktails and fancy food. It's become our calling card. We try and keep everything as close to the original as possible, you know, to the point that a lot of the work behind the bar is still done by hand. The, the thing that really makes it special is that as the rest of New York just sort of changes at warp speed around it. Now McSorley's is here and, and staying the same. A special bar and a special relationship. All of those tales told in Rafe's memoir. It's titled Two and Two, McSorley's, My Dad and Me.